Hello and welcome to this very special interview. Joining me is Sushil Kumar Modi, who has been shaping economic policy in the country in many roles. He is chairman of the Empowered Committee of State Finance Ministers, which has been in discussions with the Center on GST. Mr. Modi is also Deputy Chief Minister and Finance Minister of Bihar and a senior BJP leader. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. Modi, for joining us here on Bloomberg TV. So my first question to you, we heard the Prime Minister recently saying that it's unlikely that the much-awaited GST is going to happen in the lifetime of this government. Are you disappointed with that statement? See, naturally we are disappointed, but the fact is this, that the uh, Constitution Amendment Bill is pending with the Parliament for the last three years. So until and unless that bill is being passed by the Parliament, GST can't be implemented. Number two, to implement GST, you require a robust IT infrastructure. And the government of India had planned that there will be a GST network. So though there is a positive uh, uh, movement uh, regarding GST network, uh, but until and unless this GST network is in place, uh, you can't implement GST. And number three, which is very important, uh, which is concerning the states, the states will uh, incur heavy losses because of GST. And the central government has not been able to assure the states that they will compensate to the states whatever losses they will, ha will have for the first few years. So these are the three major bottlenecks. And because this is the last year of the present UP government, and this is an election year, and I think no government will dare to implement this type of reform at the fag end of its tenure. So there are a lot of issues still pending, which has to be worked out between the state government and the central government. And if the central government would have been proactive in the beginning, then I think this uh, GST would have come earlier. But, they, uh, but uh, in the meantime, we have lost many of the months uh, and, we, and we could not reach on consensus and there were many other issues which are still pending. So now the Prime Minister is told the truth that uh, uh, it can only come in the year 1450. Sir, over the last, uh, you know, many months, ever since you started looking into this or when this committee was set up, there was a lot of hope. In fact, it was being perceived that this was a master stroke from the government for two reasons. One, your own ability and B, the fact that you represented an opposition party and therefore there was a hope that there would be greater acceptance of you and the committee and this would happen sooner than later. Clearly, you would agree that there has been a sense of disappointment, especially since you've so tirelessly worked on this. No, see, uh, uh, to bring about to disturb a reform, you require sufficient time because the present government does not have a two-third majority in the parliament. And this bill has to be passed by both the Houses of Parliament by two-thirds of majority. Then it has to be ratified by 50% of the state assemblies. So this entire process will take a lot of time. And there are certain issues uh, which concern particular state governments. For example, Maharashtra, they are earning more than 15,000 crore out of octroi. Then Gujarat, the, they will lose about 5,000 crore because of phasing out of central sales tax. Then Punjab, Haryana, they will lose about 2,000 crore each state because of the subsumation of purchase tax. The states are more concerned how to protect their revenue. And until and unless the central government gives a, uh, an assurance to the states that there will be independent mechanism to compensate to the states, so until and unless that type of assurance does not come, it becomes difficult. So in a country like India, which is more than 28 states and more than 5 union territories, and each state is having its own problems, so here those problems has to be addressed. And so in the last one and a half year, and especially when Chidambaram became finance minister, things have moved very fast, and we have tried to resolve many of the issues, but still, uh, because this is the last year of the present government, and each and every political party will be busy with the elections of two or three months. And there are more than 
uh, state assembly elections in more than five of the states. So I think after August or September, no, nothing new uh, can be uh, new idea or new reform or new bill can be executed in India. So this is the biggest hurdle. If this would have been not the election year, then it would, would have been easier to implement GST in 1450. Sir, in a very recent interview, your colleague from your party, Mr. Arun Jaitley, told me, and I quote him, he said that there has been suddenly a set of political confrontations of which this government has done considerable harm to center-state relations. States have become a lot more suspicious of this government on account of a lot of political acts. Would you say that this is a correct statement because if at the end of the day the center is not going to be able to take states along, this GST is never going to happen? No, whatever Arun Jaitley said, it is true. But as far as GST is concerned, see, it has nothing to do with the politics. The states are more concerned to protect their revenues. So either it is a BJP ruled state or a Congress ruled state. So those states want how their revenue should be protected in GST. And the substitute government is not able to convince the states or give an emphatic assurance that their revenues will be assured or will be protected even in the GST regime. And this was the duty of the uh, central government. But as far as the empowered committee, the chairman of the empowered committee is concerned, I am uh, trying to bring more and uh, most of the states uh, on a majority of the issues. So there is a broad consensus on most of the issues. But still there are some issues which are pending. What shall be the rate, revenue neutral rate, then regarding threshold, then regarding exemptions. But these are issues, these are not such issues which can't be resolved. But now because very less time has been remained uh, with the government, because the elections are due in, in India. So I think now things will not move very fast, which were moving very fast in the last one and a half year. So it will take its own time, but as the Chairman in Power Committee, I am trying my best uh, so that in the meantime, to resolve most of the issues, and there is a broad consensus on most of the issues. So let me quote the Finance Minister, Mr. P. Chidambaram. In an interview to me recently, he said, and I quote, On GST, I have done my part. Mr. Sushil Modi has welcomed what we said in the budget and has promised to get the three officers committee to complete their work quickly. The three officers committee will be working on the nuts and bolts. My question, Mr. Modi, where do we stand as far as this committee is concerned? Because still no, March, this, this interview no, was in March, this, there was a lot of hope from the government at least that things will move and hopefully by monsoon session these bills will even be able to be passed. But clearly in the last two or three months, there seems to be a total change and perhaps an understanding of the reality that we are far away from implementing GST. So these three committees are working. They have submitted the interim report also. And we have discussed that committee's report in our Masuri meeting on 9th of 10th of this May. But the biggest obstacle is the Constitution Amendment Bill. And that bill is pending with the Parliament. And until and unless the Parliamentary Standing Committee submits its report to the Parliament and Parliament passes the bill, uh, then only this GST can be implemented. What we are doing in the, these three subcommittees, we are trying to find out the nitty gritty of GST. So the nitty gritty of the details of the GST is being chopped out or being planned in these uh, three subcommittees. But the basic thing is the uh, Constitution Amendment Bill. And why the bill is pending, I can't say it is for the Chidna, it is for the central government to talk to the Parliamentary Standing Committee and find out a way so that they can submit the report and that their bill can be introduced in the Parliament. So, on that Parliamentary Standing Committee mandate, uh, the Empowered Committee does not come into the picture. So, it is the duty of the federal government uh, to resolve the issues which are pending with the Parliamentary Standing Committee. In fact, it's interesting you make that point because Mr. Yashwant Sinha, who heads that parliamentary committee, told me on May 7th here on this channel that these two bills 
On this front, nobody has approached the BJP or any other political party for that matter to get the bills passed. The point he was making was there is not enough seriousness as far as the central government is concerned in pushing through these bills. No, this is true because, see, uh, you require political maneuvering or you require political consensus. So in an empowered Katia, I'm trying to build a consensus among the states. But is the duty of the central government to talk to the leaders of BJP or other political parties and find out and, and to resolve those uh, issues which, we, which has not been able to resolve the empowered committee. But I think the central government has not taken any initiative to resolve at the issues at the political level. So like for example the Bhujan Swaj party, they are, uh, they are not in power in any of the states. But they have a good number of MPs in the parliament. In the same way DMK, they are not in power. But they are being represented in the parliament. And in the standing committee, even Mr. Rahul Gandhi, who is a, who is a Congress leader, he is a member of the parliamentary standing committee. And in the parliamentary standing committee, uh, all the major political parties are being represented in the parliamentary standing committee. So I don't know why that bill is pending with the parliamentary standing committee. And to what extent the central government has taken the initiative uh, to bring that bill back uh, from the parliamentary standing committee along with their recommendations or along with their suggestions. So, until and unless the bill uh, comes back from the parliamentary committee and it is being passed by both of the parliament, just they can't be implemented. So, what we are doing in the standing committee, uh, in the empowered committee or the three subcommittees which have been formed, to find out the nitty gritty of GST. And I can say that uh, uh, as the chairman of the empowered committee, we have moved ahead in the last eight or nine months and we are moving in a positive direction. But it is for the central government to decide what will the time frame when they will implement GST. It is for them to decide on these issues.